What is going on guys? Chris here, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the iPhone 12. Yeah, the iPhone 12. Now I've had this phone for a few months now and I've taken thousands of pictures already. And I have to ask the question, is this better than my Canon R6? Now I've already made a video about this phone, comparing it to this camera. And we still saw that this camera, yeah, it did take more professional looking pictures, but the dynamic range and the ease of use of an iPhone just beats the whole DSLR mirrorless process. We're gonna be looking more into that. This is the iPhone 12 I've been using. It is a 128 gig iPhone 12 with the ultra wide and wide camera. I was gonna go for the 12 Pro with the telephoto, but it cost a bit too much. I didn't really see myself using the telephoto lens as I've never used it in previous iPhones. The main lens I use is the ultra wide. Now the ultra wide lens is really awesome because the field of view you get just allows you to show so much more. Just as an example, I'm gonna take a picture of the camera from the same spot with the regular camera and I'm just gonna switch it to ultra wide and then take another picture. And as you can see, you can see so much more with the ultra wide. Now, the computational photography in this phone is what makes it just amazing. When you take a picture, it basically takes a bunch of pictures and it processes them together to come out with a final perfectly exposed image. And that's kind of what separates it from the DSLR or here, let me just use this as an example. I need a prop, I always need a prop. And that's kind of what separates it from cameras like this where it takes one picture and that's the picture you get. Like this one, as soon as you hit the shutter button, it takes many pictures, processes them, figures out where to overexpose, where to underexpose the image so that you have an image that is perfectly exposed all around. That's why it has crazy dynamic range. Now this does come with flaws and things I don't like about it and we're gonna get into that later. Now something that's really fascinating to me about these iPhones is that they are still at 12 megapixels. Almost every other company has moved on to 40, 64, 100 megapixel cameras. And yes, they have a lot of pixels. And I guess if you zoom in more, there is more quality. But for some reason, the iPhone cameras still, in my opinion, take the best quality video and still pretty much take the best quality photos, especially for social media use. And with the introduction of their ultra wide camera with the iPhone 11s, it's really just changed the whole game. Now for someone like me, the ultra wide camera is really convenient when I wanna show behind the scenes of me shooting something. Like for example, if I'm shooting pictures, it's nice to be able to record behind the scenes of it with my phone, maybe for TikTok or for my Instagram story. And previously I would have to like move the camera back really far. And you you still wouldn't see as much as if you just uh, tap the ultra wide camera. You can just keep the phone about this far away from you and you get a really cool behind the scenes shot. Now often I find myself in a situation where I wanna take the best quality pictures, obviously. But when I take my professional cameras, it's just a lot of weight and a lot of things to worry about. Let's say I wanna go out with my friends and take pictures and stuff. Taking this is way more convenient than taking this. Obviously this is big, this is expensive. I need to be careful with it. I can't just easily give it to one of my friends to take pictures with because they don't really know how to use it and I would hate for them to like drop it or something. Well, a phone, everyone has a phone. Everyone pretty much can take a pretty good picture with a phone. You just kind of point and shoot. And that's I think where we are right now. And often when I go out to take pictures and stuff, I just take my phone because the quality on this camera is just fantastic. The video on this is also spectacular. Now, mainly with this camera, the front facing camera is pretty good. And I guess you look more attractive if you take a picture of yourself with the front camera, but the video quality on the rear cameras I think is the best in any phone. And I'm not even just talking about the super HDR or whatever that is, just the video quality, the resolution and the smoothness, especially when you shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, I often surprise myself by how good it looks. And honestly, it's just really amazing and surprising to me how far this all has gone as for me, mobile photography was always something I found way inferior to, I guess, professional photography. But hey, I've seen pictures taken by iPhone 12s where I 
thought, there was no doubt in my mind that it was taken with like an R5 or a full frame mirrorless camera of some sort. But no, it was just an iPhone that someone took out of their pocket, pointed at the subject, hit portrait mode and just got an amazing shot. Now that's another thing that they've improved a lot. The whole portrait mode was something that they really struggled with, especially around the hair and all that. But the portrait mode now has become really, really powerful. Like I can take pictures of cars and it looks so dope. Even when taking pictures of animals, it's able to identify objects. And this is not even the camera with the LiDAR. Theoretically, the pro cameras will take even better ones. Now, just to give you an example of how easy this all is and the whole field of view and the workflow, so to speak, of using a phone, this is my iPhone 12. Now, let's say I wanna take a picture of exactly what's in front of me right now. I could take like this, yeah, just quickly tap it. Then this is the quality picture I would get. Or I can just hit the ultra wide button take a picture of my whole setup, and this is the quality. Now that whole process and the fact that it's so easy for me to just point and shoot is changing the whole game. And it's actually something that's kind of preventing me from wanting to get a B camera, because for a while now I've been talking about getting a B camera for my Canon R6, but I like the fact that I have only one body, because carrying two bodies is always frustrating. But the fact that this camera, the camera that I always have with me, the camera that I keep in my pocket pretty much at all times, takes quality pictures that is even comparable to this is outstanding. And that's really just revolutionary. And I'm pretty sure everyone has heard the quote that the best camera is the camera you always have with you. So theoretically, my iPhone 12 is my best camera. I'm gonna have my dog be my model. God, that was so easy and look at the results. It is very, very close to DSLR quality. And like I said to almost everyone who wants to start a YouTube channel or wants to start photography, if you have one of the latest iPhone, you do not need to buy a new camera. You can learn a lot of the basics of framing, getting amazing quality pictures with your phone. I had to put it on do not disturb because you know, the amount of people texting me right now is crazy. Another thing that's kind of wild for me to realize that there are people who shoot like professionally on their phone. Now granted like social media and all that has kind of helped that whole process of shooting mobile, but I know that there's some YouTubers, even ones who are decently big that just shoot everything on their phone. And that shows you that this whole world of big cameras is dying. So either camera companies start upping their quality and start using computational photography, or we're gonna say bye-bye to these big expensive cameras. Now that said, there are some things that really keep me away from mobile photography, and that really is the lack of control. The selling point for a camera like this is that I can make the image look exactly how I want. The lighting, everything, the angles, everything can be customized. Different lenses I purchase can give looks that the iPhones will never be able to get no matter how many lenses they put on the back of their phone. And as a professional, you wanna be able to be versatile. That's why when I make my videos or I take pictures, I never shoot in auto. I'm always dialing in my settings to get the specific look I want. Now, yes, there are apps that allow you to go in manual mode and change things around, but I don't know, I always found those a little quirky. Another thing is I feel like the processing is a little bit too heavy. I've taken pictures of objects that were dark, that were black, and I wanted them to look black. But the phone thought that the black parts were just underexposed. So with the computational photography, it overexposed the shadows, making it look kind of grayish, and I really didn't like that. And that's something you get out of a bigger sensor camera, the image just looks real. Phone pictures, although they're getting way, way, way better, still have a little bit of that phone look because the sensor is really small. The colors are a little bit less accurate, Accurate and the detail doesn't really look as good. And what phone companies do is that they over sharpen their image to make it look more sharp. And that over sharpening, in my opinion, just kind of takes away from the picture and it makes it look a little bit too digital. So yes, it is definitely very, very impressive. And I feel the whole process to be simpler and easier. I can just snap a picture, toss it into Lightroom and start editing. This is the first time where I actually consider 
mobile photography to enter my Instagram or to be even part of my thumbnail. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was informative to you. I definitely recommend this iPhone 12. Yes, you could always wait for the 13, but I do feel like this one is definitely one that's worth the money. The ultra wide is better than the 11s and all the cameras seem to just be better in general. All right guys, Chris here. Welcome back to the channel. Definitely drop a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Okay.